From Hollywood. Too cool. It's the Tom Likas Show. That was awesome. And now. And now. Here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Here we are together again on the radio, you and me. And uh, it's been quite a week. Quite a week. You get tired of all that Obama stuff. You get burned out. You know, um, there's been a lot of excitement about Obama. There's been a lot of excitement about, of course, the time leading up to his nomination by the Democratic Party. The election season was just blistering. And uh, then when Obama won, everybody went wild. Then, of course, you had uh, the inauguration. And that was nothing but non-stop coverage all day long. Barack and Michelle dancing together <laughs> to the music of Beyonce, etc. Eleven different inaugural balls and... Then the first day at the White House and all the swearings in and all the pronouncements and executive orders and what have you. Now, I know no matter how much people say they are energized, I know no matter how much people say they are excited, I know no matter how much people say they're all going to join in. You know what? I've been around too long. <laughs> I've seen this too many times uh, to be stupid. Here is the reality. After the euphoria of seeing Obama go into office has, has faded, and my guess is it's already started to fade. Once that has happened, we're going to sink right back into our usual routines. All of this stuff about uh, feeling like uh, you want to pitch in, feeling like you want to be a part of it, feeling like you want to... I was watching all the NBA players. Well, you know, it makes you feel like you want to, uh, you know... Be better at what you do, you know, try to be better, try to be a better person. I was watching Derek Fisher the other night at the Lakers. It makes you wonder, like, how can I be a better husband? How can I be, uh, you know, better in my neighborhood? How can I, uh, <laughs> come on. This is all temporary euphoria. And it's all going to wear off. And I'm willing to bet you right now there are people out there who are sick of it. Already. Now, I'm not talking about the Obama haters or the McCain supporters or the Republicans or the conservatives or the John Birch members or whatever. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the people who support Obama, the people who voted for him, the people who participated in the election, the people who are on his MySpace and Facebook pages, the people who contributed money, the people who went door to door. They don't feel like they helped get him elected. I know there are people out there right now who are just sick to death of hearing about Barack Obama. Not because he deserves to be sick of. Is that a sentence? Not because he deserves us to be sick of him. There's no good way to say that. He doesn't deserve that necessarily, but it's just human nature. It's, it's just human nature. Years ago, when the movie Forrest Gump came out, here's a good example. When the movie Forrest Gump came out, oh, it was, it was being talked about everywhere. There were billboards everywhere with pictures of Tom Hanks dressed as Forrest Gump. And then there were all the appearances on the talk shows. And Tom Hanks would go on The Tonight Show and he'd show a clip. And he'd go on Letterman and he'd show a clip. And then he'd go on other shows and show clips. And then there were all of these references to Forrest Gump, quotes from the movie, kept appearing places. And and I, for one, got so sick and tired of, of hearing about Forrest Gump that all the hype had the opposite effect on me. Now there was no way I was going to go see Forrest Gump, no matter what. Do you know that to this day I have not seen that movie? But I'm going to tell you something. I feel like I have seen it. I mean, I know the plot... I know all of the major quotes of the film, and frankly, I heard people talk about it so much and read so many cultural references to it. That was the first movie I ever made the joke. <laughs> I said, uh, this movie is, is the, the, the promotion is so relentless that if you don't come to see it, it's coming to see you. 
I've said that about other things since, but it was Forrest Gump that made me feel that way. And that's kind of the way I think a lot of people probably feel about Barack Obama by now. You know, uh, all right, enough already. Change, enough already. <laughs> Who did Michelle Obama's gown? Or is Sasha and Malia cute? How good a dancer was he on uh, inaugural ball night? You know, and all this stuff. I mean, I, I know there are people out there who are just sick of it. And so, uh, you know, again, I, I, I'm the irritant. Okay, I, I again, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I voted for Obama, and I want to see him succeed. But I'm also a commentator on human nature, and I know human nature. We build people up so we can tear them down. And then we like to see them make a comeback. Have you noticed that about just about everybody in our society? We build them up, usually giving them much more credit than they're, they're deserving. Then we find out they can't live up to our expectations, so we knock them down. And then we can't wait for their redemption on Oprah or <laughs> by making the big comeback. Right, here, here's one. Kurt Warner, perfect example. Kurt Warner, the grocery store clerk who played arena football and nobody thought he could, he could cut it in the NFL. And then somehow he latches on with the St. Louis Rams, he wins the Super Bowl. Thank you, Jesus! And so Jesus uh, gets thanked and what does Jesus do to him? Jesus kind of kicks him down the NFL ladder. And suddenly he's bouncing around with all these other teams like the New York Giants and others. Doesn't win a damn thing. And the guy eventually is like 37 years old and, you know, he's practically in the NFL dumpster. So he signs on with the Arizona Cardinals as the backup to Matt Leinert, who's going to be the next big thing. Turns out Matt Leinert's not the next big thing. And when he gets hurt, they have no choice but to put Kurt Warner back into the lineup. And of course, now everybody just loves the Kurt Warner story because... When Matt Leinert was ready to come back and play, there was no way he was getting back into the lineup because Kurt Warner, at 37 years old, was winning all these games for the Arizona Cardinals. Thank you, Jesus! And here's Kurt Warner taking the Arizona Cardinals to the Super Bowl for the first time. That's a perfect example of what we love. We love seeing somebody come out of nowhere. We love seeing them become a big success like winning the Super Bowl. Uh, we get sick of hearing them, you know, we, all the thank you, Jesus, and all the making fun of We get sick of the guy, so he falls out of the public perception. Then we love seeing, after we've kicked him and the, you know, thrown him down in the mud, we love seeing him crawl out of the muck and make his big comeback. So it, it, it's no different for Barack Obama. You know, we, we were thrilled to see him on the way up, and now you're going to see the people going, enough already, I can't take it anymore. So again, I'm not looking for people who disagree with Barack Obama politically. That's a different show. I'm talking about people who are tired of hearing about Barack Obama, the household name, the consumer product, the package that everybody bought. People who are tired of seeing his face, tired of hearing about him, tired of hearing about who's friends with him, who knows him, who supported him, what celebrities support him. Tired of hearing all the people uh, talking about their hopes and dreams for what he's going to do. You're just burned out. If you are burned out on hearing about Barack Obama, especially if you're a supporter, I want to hear from you. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Shorter commercial breaks. More phone calls. We take them faster. We don't suffer fools gladly. But we encourage fools to call in at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. I'm talking this hour to people who are sick of hearing about Barack Obama. You just burned out on it. Sarah on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. 
I'm so excited. I got through. Wow. I've been through before. I can't believe it. It's awesome. Um, I just really feel like people have lost touch with reality because Barack Obama is human and he's going to screw up. And then everyone's going to be completely crushed because the superhero made a mistake. So, I mean, once that happens, I think, you know, this excitement is going to be kind of dead. <laughs> well, um, it's going to be a big one, though, because, uh, for example, you had the example this week of uh, Timothy Geithner, the guy who was uh, uh, nominated to be Treasury Secretary. Right. I mean, the guy didn't pay taxes. Now, how do you get that guy confirmed after he admits that this is the Department of the Treasury, okay? They're like, taxes are their business. <laughs> That's what keeps them in business. The guy well, didn't pay ta $34,000 of taxes. I think that's why politicians get away with so much, because people don't want to believe that they can screw up so badly. Well, again, I think I think Barack Obama will be allowed to, to have some pretty big screw-ups in the beginning. Yeah, that's probably true. He's going to be given a pretty wide swath, but I know there are people who are just fed up with hearing about it. I mean... It, I voted for the guy, and uh, I don't know if I'm there yet. I, I'm enjoying hearing about him, but I know there are going to be people going, enough already, enough. Yeah, well, it's complete overkill. It's like, how much how much of the same information do I have to hear? I mean, it's, you know, I, I watched part of the inauguration, and every time I turn on the TV, they're showing the same thing over and over and talking about how wonderful he is, and then... Um, I mean, I know more about his childhood than I do about some of my own friends. Like, just, just no, constantly. I know. On TV. No, no. Here's how bad it is. I know more about his childhood than I remember about my own. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty bad. That is pretty bad. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? I'm doing okay, Mike. Well, I'm on board with uh, what you said about people being burned out, man. I've been kind of burned out on this guy for months. Uh, and I'll tell you what I'm burning out. I'm, I'm proud of the, uh, change that our society is allowed to happen as far as the cultural diversity or whatever and letting a black president come into power. But I'm kind of disappointed with the black community because they can't look past that and just accept that he's a good politician. He's a good leader. So I think I'm, I'm just sick of hearing that he, I have a feeling that he got voted in because he was a black person. Rather than a good leader. Oh, no. I, 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 don't, I, don't agree, well. I don't agree. I don't agree with that. For, well, but you didn't vote for him for that reason. And the, the fact is, Obama got elected because white America voted for him. I mean, if every black person in America voted for Obama, that's only fifteen percent of the vote. Sure, and I guess I should restate that every every black person I talked to is they they knew nothing about the politics part of it. And I'm not saying I'm a politician or I did my studying on the candidates and that's about as far as I go. But that was their reasoning that they're trying to make a change in the world for the wrong reasons in my opinion as far as and every every person you see interviewed in South Central, they're trying for you know, I've just burnt out on the sympathy thing that uh, oh he needs to get in because he's a black president and we need to change and uh, do it for Dr. Martin Luther King and this and that. And I'm not a racist by any means. I'm just kind of what do you think? Wait, well, what do you think they mean by that? Say again. What do you think people mean by that? If that's what you're hearing. Well, I, I support what they mean. I'm just sick of hearing it. There, I'm. So that's you're just the saying only hearing people that, say the same thing over and over. They say the same thing over and over that he's uh, America's due for a change, and um, I, I think too often. They're talking about the significance. Same with Hillary Clinton. They're too often talking about the significance of that she was a female getting into the presidency versus and Obama was a black male getting into the presidency, rather than focusing on what this country needs is a good leader. They don't need a good black leader, a good female leader. They just need, period, a good leader. All right. Jacob on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm okay. Great. Uh, Tom, I, I mean, I am... A, I am a, I am a Obama supporter, but I mean, at the same time, I'm kind of getting sick of hearing all these people on on TV talking about Obama this, Obama that. It's kind of becoming like the Paris Hilton thing. You know how when. So you see, you see him as some kind of celebrity that they're just writing yeah. about, like 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 TMZ or Entertainment Tonight. By the way, Obama's been on Entertainment Tonight every night for like two weeks. Yeah, so he's more of a celebrity than he's a president, so 
people don't look at him as a president no more. That's how I see you might be right about that. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Ed on the Tom Likas show. Yes, Tom. Yes, Ed. Yes, I was burned out on inauguration day. I think they need to let the man do his job, and the media is just in love with the man. Yeah, well, that's true. I mean, and and for, for all the reasons that the media becomes fascinated with anybody, because he's a good-looking guy, good-looking wife, good-looking kids, intact family, articulate guy, smart, well-spoken, uh, makes a good interview. But, Tom, he has, a stack, he has a card stacked against him because there's a lot of jealousy and animosity because he's so well-liked by the media and the public. Oh, we'll get to that on another show. I'm asking you why you're sick of him. All the exposure and the fickleness of the media. Well, the fickleness of the media would make you sick of him. That would make the well, media be critical of him when they say, well, look, the guy's not getting the job done. But we're not talking about that. Well, I'm talking about you. Detectives. But we're not. All right. Thank you. Uh, we're not talking about the media. We're talking about you. You. Why are you? The question is, listen carefully. I'm putting italics on one of the words of this sentence. Why are you sick of hearing about him? You. Tony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, how you doing? How you doing? I'm doing all right. I just uh, went waiting for that word. I was hearing a lot of stuff going back and forth, but it's just a lot of nonsense. I'm going out hearing uh, about all this nonsense what's going on. He's just another president, another person, and all this uh, animosity stuff and all this colored and racial stuff that's happening is going to come to an end. It's colored stuff? Oh yes, all all you know, all the racial and all black power and everything. It's just like when black someone power. dies. Who's talking about black power? I was listening to your show all for a couple hours, and someone you really mean a saying, caller a caller claims that Ludacris said the words black power in a concert. I mean, I have not heard the phrase black power at any time in connection with Barack Obama until that caller called in. Yeah, earlier uh, about. An hour, two hours ago, somebody called and they were in, in Vegas or somewhere. And somebody... uh, I just said that. All right, one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Derek on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much, Derek. Man, I'm right here chilling. Listen, um, I was listening to your topic, and I am so tired of Barack Obama. Everyone is all up, just all up on it, man. I mean, what's that all about? I went to the mall right now. Dude's got him on his jacket. Uh, store selling his shirts for five ten dollars. I'm just so sick of it. Some people are making a lot of money on Barack mm. Obama. Big time, big time. And you know what? And you ask half the people what Barack's causes are, they have no idea. They're just jumping on the bandwagon, and that's what I'm really sick of. I mean, Barack is cool and all, but I mean, please. He, you know, he Listen. can do he can do anything he wants right now. I mean, yeah. with like five females at a time. You know what I'm saying, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, Tom, I don't want to waste your time, but why don't you take me out with a bong hit and a thank you, Jesus? Here you go, Derek. Thank you, Jesus. Talking to people who are sick of Barack Obama, sick of hearing about him. Michael, on the Tom Likas show, hello. Tom, thank you. Sure. Um, so I'm sick of the coverage of the inauguration for the whole fact that Everybody that covered it was black. Every journalist, every celebrity, everything was black. Not everybody. Uh, Brian Williams is the whitest man on earth. I saw him covering it. Yeah, but all the local news? Katie Couric. Yeah, I, I agree. There was a certain amount of the TV station sending the black guy. Uh, whether the black guy was the political reporter or not, I saw NBC sell as send Al Roker out there to try to yell something at Obama as he drove by. Exactly, and then the he's the, black, the, Al Roker. Yeah, then then we had uh, the neighborhood party, the neighborhood ball. What was that about? It was uh, one of eleven uh, uh, balls, uh, inaugural balls. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Joe on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing? Great. I just uh, I'm sick and tired of, of hearing it, and but it's classic uh, liberal media, and it's kind of ironic that while they go around and crush 
uh, conservative. Uh, well, you could say that, but I, I seem to recall hearing an awful lot about the personal lives of Ronald and Nancy Reagan. Up to well, and just, including, up to be. and including the liberal media's coverage of the death of Ronald Reagan, which went on for days and days and days. I understand that. But so why does this have to do with the, the liberal media? I don't understand. Well, the, you know, they, I believe that the, the uh, media in particular, your CNNs and stuff, they have an agenda that they're not really objective. So what was the agenda of all the people who, who were fixated about Ronald Reagan? Oh, I think that uh, they get fixed. They, they was that the liberal media? Levels. Was that the liberal? Wait, 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 wait. Was, yeah. that the, was that the liberal media? It's fixated on Ronald Reagan? Yeah, the liberal media. Ago? Yeah, was that the liberal media? Um, I don't know. No, no, I no, don't no, 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 no. Answer the question. Come on. Well, I, I'm assuming the, the the media typically all has a, a liberal agenda. Well, then and, why were they following Ronald Reagan around? Well, well, they follow. Why were they following Bush? Why were they following Sarah Palin? They, well, because I mean, the reality right? is they, 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 what the media do, and by the way, media is a plural word, what the media do uh, has more to do with uh, trying to catch characters who make for good quotes, no matter what their politics are, which is why they followed Sarah Palin around. Well, they followed Sarah Palin because there was more of a story there. What about Ronald like Reagan? But what about Ronald Reagan? Well, they, Reagan was exploited on, on our but, but, but again, what does that have to do with being a liberal media? Here's what I think is interesting, though, is that... You're not Obama answering my question. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. My question is going to have to remain a rhetorical one. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-8666. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show. I'm 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. Who's sick of hearing about Barack Obama? Sick of it by now. Let's say hello to Diana in Portland, Oregon on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great. I think it's become the world's most uh, continuously running, long-running reality show. And uh, as good as the show might be and as compelling the characters, doesn't every show go on hiatus? Well, eventually, uh, just about everybody gets voted off the island. You get left with one. I guess that's what happened with Obama. But then you move on to the next <laughs> reality show. I would think so. Uh, love your show, Tom. Would you blow me up? Yes, of course. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. Tyler on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hey, I walk into the mall with my girlfriend about a week ago. Yeah. And this guy has a shirt on his on his, on his shirt. It says "Our President Obama," and all, but "R" was spelled A R E and spelled the whole shirt wrong, and just made him look like a total fool. <laughs> so, like, I, you should be able to like have a high school education before you vote. You know, like, you know, it's weird. Oh well. Well, Obama did say we need to fix education. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you for that, Tyler. Sean on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, this is really a privilege. I, uh, I know. admire your inter intellect, your uh, your honesty, and your bank account. So glad Thank to you. talk to you. Sure. Hey, uh, not only am I sick of it, actually, I'm a little bit of a, uh, afraid. I think we need to uh, be on guard for the potential emerging of a cult of personality here. Well, fortunately for us, we get bored uh, with people so fast. Uh, the, you know, the cult of personality exists on paper only. I think ultimately. Uh, people are going to start beating the crap out of Obama within the first six months. Maybe so, but I'm a little worried that we haven't seen the counterpoint even before he took office. If you remember back before Bush took office, we had a great book by Molly Evans called Shrub that came out. So at least there was a voice out there telling you, hey, you know, there are some cracks in the armor. Yeah, well, that, that'll come. That'll come soon enough. Okay, well, if it doesn't, if it doesn't come, Tom, we're going to have to uh, call back in and talk about this because we got to we got to stay watchful, regardless I'm, of uh, party, regardless of any other. I agree uh, with you. I totally agree. All right, thanks again, Tom. Thank you. Appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. This is Bryce on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Bryce. Hey, my wrong button. Hello. 
I'm going to make this real quick. Especially, I think he has a lot of good qualities, and I support him even though I didn't vote for him. But I am really tired of this. we're going to change the world deal. We're going to okay? change where you're tired of the idea of changing the world? Yeah, or, you know, you know, change, change. Here's the deal, Tom. So you like the world the way I it was? I would have voted for him before I went to military. When I went in the Marine Corps, I went over there because I was curious myself, you know, international relations, how is it really over there? So I get over there and I come back. i tell you what, we as American people, we really need to wake up because if the world was so easy to change, we would have done it already. It's just not that simple. And it's I'm just so sick of all these naive people living in the bubble over here, Tom. They think that, uh, you know, it's so easy to get peace and, and change. It's just not that simple, man. I'm sick of it. I don't hear uh, Barack Obama saying it's simple. I think the average person thinks he's going to turn on a faucet and everything's going to change. Right, and it, and it goes along with that. And another thing, what has he done yet? He hasn't really done that much well, yet. Nobody, but, 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 but what could he have possibly done? This is his first week in office. Well, I'm the type of person that... You show me what you can do, and then I give you respect. Respect is earned. I don't just go crazy about you, and you haven't even done anything yet. Well, that's a whole other question. Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. Are you sick of hearing about Barack Obama? Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. I, uh, you know, I'd like to play a little bit of counterpoint here for a second and just say I think that the common perception is that you know, we had a pretty bad president, and we're getting off that. And I think a lot of this hoopla is, um, you know, it's encouraging, you know, in a way, because it's people celebrating that it is possible for things to change now, you know. I think there was a lot of negativity the past eight years and before Well, that. we've had plenty of change. By the way, I, I think people are wrong. We've had plenty of change the last few years. Uh, the economy has changed. It's, it's now really lousy. Our relationship with other countries has changed. Everybody uh, hates us. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, of course, uh, what else has changed? Well, Saddam Hussein is dead. That's changed. Well, uh, but yes, we, uh, of course, uh, uh, we don't have any stem cell research. Uh, science uh, has been de-emphasized. Arts education has been de-emphasized. There's been plenty of change in the last eight years. You just haven't been paying attention. Oh, baby, come on. Say stem cells again. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Veronica of the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. Hey. How you doing? Great. Great. I have to say one thing that I am sick of has to be the tabloids and TMZ talking about what Michelle Obama was wearing and how many times she changed and how much her dress was and what they're eating at the balls, and that's annoying. But when it comes to him being... The new president, that was a historic day in our history as Americans, and I think that was the greatest thing. I could never be sick of that. Well, uh, <laughs> you know, again, I think uh, so much of what we're hearing about has nothing to do with anything that's important. Um, and uh, this week's right. uh, commentary about the inauguration and the inaugural balls is, is a perfect example of that. Yeah, it uh, went on for so long. Yes. What was Barack Obama doing on 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 Entertainment Tonight and The Insider? <laughs> I know it's it's crazy. That could make people sick of it. I understand, but I mean, it's a historic day. It's an, it's a great thing to say we're Americans now. We have we have a lot of good things to look forward to. Yep. Well, I, I think, definitely think so. Well, I hope you're right. That's all I can say. It's Karen on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, I just wanted to call and tell you I'm sick of hearing about the ignorance about the people's knowledge of him. You know, They're, they can say, oh, Barack Obama killed puppies and kittens, and the black people go, yay, let's vote for him. You know, they don't know the what he's for, what he's against. They just know that he's black, and that's all they care about voting for, you know. The majority of them, there was a comedian who was going out onto the streets and saying, you know, he was putting in McCain, whatever McCain was for or against, and he was saying that that's what Obama was for. And all the black people were like, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right, like abortion and all that. And they didn't even know what the, you know, what they were voting for. 
Well, I wonder, I, you, you know who watches entertainment tonight, right? Yeah, you know who watches entertainment tonight. It's chicks. Chicks with nothing better to do. Chicks who want to feel like they watch the news. They make entertainment tonight look like the news. And chicks go, oh, yeah, I saw the news tonight. Yeah, I was watching all the uh, stories about the inaugural ball. I mean, how many of these chicks who watch entertainment tonight have any idea about politics or about Barack Obama? Uh, and all they want to know about is what clothes he wore, what clothes she wore, what clothes the kids wore. And that sad state of affairs that that's what we care about, you know. The fact is, is you know, I hope that he's going to do a good job. Did I vote for him? No. You know, did I want to vote for McCain either? No. You know, he was the less of the two evils to me. You know, I want someone who's going to go in and cowboy up. You know, I don't want someone who's going to be friends with the Muslims or be friends with everybody. I want someone who's going to protect this country. No, you I, know. I totally, uh, well, I totally agree with you in terms of, uh, uh, by the way, I do think that we need to uh, have better relations with other countries. That is very important. Mom, Don't undersell that. The relationship of Muslims. There's never going to be another a good relationship with them. Ever. Well, yeah, we, you don't. Well, how much do you know about that? About the Sunnis. They, 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 they can't even be friends amongst themselves. Yeah, but there were times in this country's history when we had better relationships than we do now. Yeah. Right? Yeah, there was, but we also had a tougher, you know, we cowboyed up then. No? We doesn't, mean, doesn't mean we, we doesn't mean we can't go back to those days at some point here. Tom Likes. one 800 tom Tom. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likes Show. standing up on this stage today. That's because of my Lord up above. I got to say thanks to Jesus. You knew I was going to do it, but I got to do it. Kurt Waters at it again. Now when you ask me taking out Kurt Waters style, I guess you'll have to specify. one 800 800 Tom, the Tom Lankin Show coming to you from Hollywood. And you hear us now six days a week, of course. Saturdays, 2 until 6 p.m. Every Saturday, 2 until 6 p.m. Pacific Time. And Monday through Friday from 3 until 8 p.m. Pacific Time. As you head home on 97.1 FM Talk. And if you can't hear us on the radio, you can always get us at blowmeuptom.com. Click on the Listen Live button. And there we be. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Talking to people who are sick to death of hearing about Barack Obama. Carla! On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, this is Carla. Yes, I'm sick of hearing about it because they're forgetting the simple fact that he is not the first black president. Really? Who is the first black president? I know who he is. Oh, I will tell us. I'm, I'm interested. I wish I would have took all my facts down before I started. Yeah, to speak. well, that's the, the, the famous last but words our first of a caller. The president was in back in 1780, 87, and he was actually the so first he was president. Before, well, he was before George Washington. Before George Washington ever even went into office. But the only thing about him is that he was. Now, you're not, assuming that George, name, you're not assuming George Washington was black because his last name was Washington, are you? Oh, he was mulatto. George Washington was mulatto? George Washington was mulatto. I had no idea. Well, everybody was dipped into the chocolate, Tom. And so, uh, but wait a minute, George Washington, uh, you're telling me what, his mother was a slave? Well, actually, what I'm talking about is that, no, I'm just saying that they were all dipping into the chocolate. Yeah, but how did that make, how did that make George Washington mulatto? He's not. A, he's not one hundred percent a white man. Uh, where do you he's get this from? Half. Where do you get this from? But this is what this is what I'm going. Can, can you tell about. me what your source of that information is? I want to. I want to look it up. Well, I've worked with it with the elderly people for sixteen years. I haven't worked. You haven't worked with anyone who was around when George Washington was president. So you you can't I've talk about. I've worked with the elderly people for sixteen years. They were and not they that elderly. A lot of information. Well, yeah, but you have to tell me the but source. That's not what I want to talk about. I, well, we'll, 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 we'll get to it. No, no, no. I'll no, decide. No, no, no. I will decide. No, I will decide when you get to talk what, about what you want to talk about. You brought this up. And so now we're going to uh, resolve it right now. You, you're telling us this, but you have no source of that information, no reliable source, correct? Well, none that's dead, uh, alive right now. 
None that's no. alive, right? Well, yes, that's my point. And, and by the way, a reliable source would not be somebody's anecdote. A reliable source would be a library, a college professor who I could contact. A reliable source would be a book written oh. by a noted okay. historian. All right. Okay, all right. We could stay on this. So that's, as you... No, 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 no. I, I don't care what you called about. I'm the host of the show, and I determine the course of the telephone call, not you. I'm the boss here. Yes, okay, you're the boss. You're yes, the boss. I am. And so you'll okay, do... Okay, so go on, beat it up. Uh, don't I'm worry, sure you, you called in up. with it, uh, because I'm proving what a moron you are. Uh, because moron, you called... I'm yes. to say that, we, that he, that Barack Obama is not the first... Well, we haven't even got... President. Yes, you are, because there's not one shred of evidence that this is true. Is, is there... Oh, yes, there is. He's in a monument. Oh, my God, I've got to call you back. There is not one... Well, why do you call me when you don't have the information? Well, we definitely you call me when you got the information. You don't have any information. You're just a filthy language, you bitch. Zero tolerance policy. That's a good way to prove your point. Just start using the F word. First black president. Was Josh Gibson. was... <laughs> <laughs> Harriet Tubman was the first black president, but nobody knows that. Nobody ever gets a credit for that. Yeah. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. I'm talking to people who are tired of hearing about Barack Obama. Let's say hello here to Tracy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Long-time listener, first-time caller. I love you. Thanks for cutting her off. Of course. First of all. I am so tired. I worked yesterday. I have no problem with it. I'm happy we got a different president in for change. I'm all for that. But if I hear the word freaking inauguration one more time, most of the black people can't even spell that. I wanted to say a bad word, but I stopped myself. Uh oh. They don't even know what it means. And they're, they're just there just because he's you, black. Boy, if you said that, you better be African American because. Uh, I am African American. I don't yes. want anyone laying that one on me. And I'm a um, L.A. 10, by the way. Really? <laughs> have I ever met you before? No, you have not. Maybe it's time. It may be time. <laughs> but let me tell you how so over the radio and television. Yesterday, I got off work, went straight to the mall, and got in on the freebies that Nordstrom's, Macy's, and Bloomingdale's were giving away free cosmetics. Hmm. Really? A lot of people wouldn't have known that if they were not at home. Watching television, but they everyone was glued to the TV, and I'm really tired of hearing. That. I'm happy we have. I'm happy that someone in the office that's different than before. Wow, but uh, you're tired of hearing the name Barack Obama. I I don't mind Barack. I think my big issue is. A lot of black people think that he's a black president, he's for black people. My thing is he's a president and he's for the people, so I don't get it. You just, they're still going to get pulled over driving white black. Don't you know? I don't understand. There's nothing's going to change with that. I guess you're right. <laughs> I'm black. I'm driving. I may get pulled over without a headset right now. What do you think? <laughs> you love living on the edge. <laughs> exactly. So I'm just really tired of hearing it. I'm happy everyone went out and celebrated. I really think that everyone didn't need to be there. Yes, it's historical. Yes, it's the first time, but it's, it's over now. Did they celebrate like this when Bush came into office, when Clinton got into office? Remember, that's our first real black president, right? Yes, of course. So, what's the deal? I'm, I'm tired of it, and I'm black, so <laughs> <laughs> help me understand. one 800 800 tom it's our telephone number. It's Devin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Father, how you doing? Doing okay. I I gotta tell you, man, I'm so sick of this. It's like it's like America's following like a cultic leader. I mean, you got people doing dances for this guy, throwing parades. It's the savior to the world. Everybody's gonna be okay. It's a Barack Obama, Barack Obama, the answer to everything. I I'm just in complete shock. Like the, the caller before me just said, you didn't see anybody else celebrating. What, what, what's the reason? Can you think you know the reason why everyone's so excited about this guy? Well, I know why people are excited, because we've had eight years of that buffoon. Okay, well, 
I can see everyone saying how Bush is screwed up, you know, this and that. But honestly, the guy didn't do that bad of a job. I mean, can anybody what? tell me how what? How many? How many? What? Okay, okay. What? Let, let me. I understand. Let me finish, please. Come on. Okay, look at, look at, look at. How many terrorist attacks have we had on United States soil? Oh, since? come on. How many did we have before that? Please. None, but he walked into that. And I'm not trying to defend him. I'm just going to say the simple Yes, fact. you are trying to defend him. Stop it. Okay, the, the subject is brought The Obama. guy had the lowest approval rating of any president since Nixon. Okay, and I, I can't And Nixon disagree with was, that. An un, uh, was an unindicted, uh, unconvicted criminal. Well, you you got me there. I, I can't argue with those 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 uh, facts there. But anyways, man, I just wanted to say that enough is enough. The guy's president. We elected a black man. Everyone just needs to chill out. And you know, race card is done. I don't care. All I think that is if this guy screws up, that's it for the black race. They're never getting another shot. So anyways, take me out with a bong rip and a and a thank you, Jesus. All right, Devin. Here you go. Jesus. Rosie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Rosie. I'm just calling to tell you how tired I am about hearing about Obama. Really? I am tired because, I mean, the whole point was about uniting the country, and they seem to be dividing it. Oh, our black president, our first black president. Okay, we get it. You know, let's see what the guy can do. You know? Yep. Well, it's time. It is time. But let's, let's see if he can fix the economy. Let's see if he can, you know, stand up to what he's saying, back up his words, and let's see. Yeah, it's time to uh, put up or shut up. <laughs> All right, Tom. Thank you, Rosie. Appreciate the call. <laughs> Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. You know, we're here every Saturday now. Saturdays from 2 until 6 p.m. Pacific Time on 97.1 FM Talk. And if you can't hear us on the radio, you go to our website between 2 and 6 p.m. Pacific Time on Saturdays. Just go to blowmeuptom.com and click on the Listen Live button, blowmeuptom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.